So getting scammed as an expat. I was reading a Facebook group the other day and there was a post by a woman who almost got scammed. And I, you know, I always think that scams are pretty easy to spot, but I guess people still fall for them. And it's a bit like Nigerian scams. They still getting sent out because obviously people are falling for the scams. I don't know who these people are. People don't admit to it. It's not like someone goes, oh, hey, you know what happened uh, last week? I gave away 5,000 euros to some Nigerians by accident. No. So, but it, these scams are obviously happening. People are obviously getting caught. And when you read things on the Facebook groups about expats almost getting scammed while searching for an apartment, you kind of go, oh, okay, the, these, is, these things are still happening. So I took a look at what kind of scams uh, expats can expect. And these are the most common ones. So I'm going to run through the most common kinds of scams that you can expect, how to spot them, hopefully, and how to avoid them. So how do you avoid getting scammed? Well, I'll get to that. I'll get to that at the end. But first, let's talk about the most common types of scams that are out there and aimed at expats. Apartment scams, job scams, and financial scams. I think these are the ones that you'll find the most often. Apartment scams are probably the most common one and they've been around for a very long time. They're definitely not new. Quite often it involves a really, really nice apartment, probably a penthouse, probably fully furnished. And you contact the owner and they're not in the city or they're not in the country. And they ask you to send documents. And then after that, you probably have to pay some kind of deposit either to see the place or to get access to the place. And if you send that deposit money, you're probably not going to get it back. So that's the most common way that they do accommodation scams. Sometimes they'll even ask you to post the money to something that looks quite professional, like a Western Union account or home away. And that money is pretty much gone. They, uh, they will disappear. And if you send them documents with your photograph, they'll probably use it to scam new people because at some point they like to send their own photo photograph through so they look like a trusting landlord or a trustworthy landlord, let's put it that way. Uh, so yeah, the ways that you can spot this, I think the rule is don't pay for anything that you haven't seen. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And also maybe check the emails. If you see bad grammar and bad spelling, that's fine. But if you see inconsistently bad grammar and bad spelling where they're, doing, they're making different mistakes. It could mean that multiple people are writing the mails. That might be an alarm bell for you. Uh, yeah, so you might be thinking, who pays for a place without seeing it anyway? And the fact is, at that point, you don't know. You might just be so damn desperate. Or you could ask yourself, you know, this does seem too good to be true, but what if I've just lucked out and I've hit the jackpot and I've gotten a prime apartment at a steal. What if this is for real? And then you kind of second guess your second guessing and before you know it, you're a victim of the scam. So it happens, it can happen. I feel bad for the people it happens to because I mean, I don't think you need to be particularly dumb for this to happen to you. I think it could just happen. Another way that you might be scammed is a tenant might be leaving their apartment or someone pretends to be the landlord of a real apartment for rent and they try to fool you into giving them the deposit. So this one is a little more tricky to spot, but one way you could potentially spot this is ask yourself how easy are they making this for me? If this if the process is seeming a little too easy, then probably something is up because as with everything in Germany, getting an apartment uh, involves a lot of bureaucracy. You probably have to give a, a credit check, you have to give bank statements, probably sa salary slips, all kinds of things. So if none of that is requested and things are seeming a little too easy, you're probably being scammed, just saying. So to avoid rental scams, I think a very good bit of advice is don't pay money for anything you haven't seen, as I said earlier, and don't pay until you've signed a rental contract. It really is acceptable to say, I'm not gonna give any money away until there is an official rental contract and both parties have signed. That's not to say you won't get scammed, but it'll make it a little more difficult to get scammed. Then you can have job scams, which uh, is a little less common than the rental scam thing, but it happens. And the scammers might post a fake job for a real company, or they'll post a job at a fake company, or they'll pretend to be recruiters helping you find a very cool job. So 
during the process, they'll try and solicit money from you or just your personal information. And remember, the thing to remember is scammers are not always after your money. They sometimes after your data and trying to get access to other accounts that you may use those same credentials for. So yeah, before you uh, do anything, just do your homework, check up on the company as much as you can, do online research, go to Facebook for uh, groups or online forums if you have to and ask around about the company and see, just do your due diligence. Uh, make sure if it's a recruiting company, make, th make sure as much as you can that they're legit. And again, don't pay money for things up front. The third kind of scam is financial, uh, a financial scam. And these are more your common garden variety uh, scams that are geared towards foreigners. And they include things like investment scams, fake financial advisors, and so on. And here also entrepreneurs are at risk. I've, I know of a story where scammers pretended to be some kind of European institution that small businesses needed to register with to become accredited. And it usually involves what looks like a bona fide contract. But the moment that you register with them and sign the contract, what you may not have noticed in the fine print or in the contract somewhere is it allows them to take money from you on an annual basis. And usually this is a large sum of money, which for someone just setting up a company can be devastating. So, you know, entrepreneurs look out as well. So be careful what you sign. And again, do your research. So avoiding scams like these. Now, you might be able to spot them. Uh, sometimes you won't be able to spot them. But I think if you stick to two golden rules, uh, you can avoid scams or potentially avoid scams. Number one, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. And number two, always double check whether it's checking with Germans you know or expat friends or uh, going onto Facebook groups or online forums and asking around just double check double check whenever you can and I think with these tips you will uh, you know maintain a healthy dose of skepticism and make sure you don't get scammed don't get scammed